Vanilla Man still there on the inside. Brandon Court is improving, though a little bit short of room as they make the top turn with three flights left to jump and a very open-looking race with Patras, Heroes Fatal, Balin Clay, King and Allahabad, the front four. Crocody follows these in fifth place, then Vanilla Man towards the inside. They are followed closely by Magic Combination, who's made good headway through the field. Also right there, coming there strongly is Native Dara as they run down towards the third last, over which it was Balin Clay, King and Heroes Fatal. Native Dara in the headgear, the black and white jacket coming strongly. Behind horses is Crocody. Then Brandon caught the outside in a noseband. Vanilla Man towards the inside, then Ross Moff and the improving magic combination. They run towards the second last Balin Clay King and Native Dara. Hot on their heels, Ilahabad on the inside. Heroes Fatal, Crocodile and Brandon Court. The whips are up. Ross Moff and Vanilla Man. These are chased by magic combination. And behind runners running on from the rear is Dara Poor and Wisley Wonder. But Native Dara is the horse to catch, clearing the final flight and a bold lead there. Lands five lengths clear. Ross Moff heads the chasing pack. Then Vanilla Man behind horses, Brandon Court. And coming home very strongly on the outside is What's Up Boys flying home. Native Dara dying. What's up, boys? It's flashing home on the inside. Dig it up. What's up, boys? From Native Dara, run out of it in third place. Side of hurdles, they all handle that well. She wears it well, continues to hold just about fourth position. Echoes in rain at the back. Brandy Love, two lengths ahead of her on the dark blue of Theatre Glory, also towards the rear of the field. Running up towards the top of the hill. Very little change in the order. Uh, lead continues with Love Envoi. Honeysuckle is not that far behind her, though. Touches down about a length and a half behind in second place. With a noseband, Marie's Rock, Nico de Boinville up into third place. And then comes She Wears It Well. She Wears It Well at one off the rails. Two off the rails is Queensbrook. Epiton poised right in behind those. Then comes Theatre Glory. Brandy Love, Echoes and Rain are the next pair. They're at the top of the hill now, about to swing downhill. Three more to jump in probably the best mares ever race ever run this close brothers mare's hurdle and love envoy heads down the hill begins to free wheel and try and get away leads by a length and a half honeysuckle in second Mari's rock is there she wears it well just in behind those queensbrook wide on the course epitant uh, making progress echoes in rain the green and red making good headway theater glory behind those now brandy love is the back marker they're coming down to the second last love envoy just in front to Honeysuckle in second position as they take the second last flight of hurdles. Uh, behind those, Mari's Rock. And then on the left with the red cap is Queen's Brook. Epiton trying to get through. She wears it well in behind those. They turn into the home straight now. Love Envoy has the lead. Honeysuckle asked to quicken. Behind these, Queen's Brook in third place. Mari's Rock is struggling in fourth, running on Echoes in Rain. Brandy Love as well. The last flight coming up now, nearest to us. The pale jacket of Honeysuckle, furthest from us. Love Envoy, the red, white, and Blue. Love Envoy was just in front there. To Honeysuckle in second. Queensbrook is behind those. They race up towards the line. Honeysuckle is responding to the calls of Rachel Blackmore and she'll end with a victory. Honeysuckle has done it. Second position, Love Envoy. Queensbrook behind those. Then Echoes in Rain and Brandy Love. They're through halfway in the Betfred Cheltenham Gold Cup of 2014, and it will be T for three and on his own, the first two over that fence. Followed then by last instalment, a reminder there for Katenko, who's ridden along. So to his stable mate, Ublon Dezobo, who's still taken wide as they go on towards another water jump, fence number 14. Over this one they go, on his own, T for three, last instalment, the first trio. Followed then by Lyrene Legend and Silviniano Conti in the red and pink. Cloudy two is still there on the outside. That leading group followed by Ublon de Zobo as they crossed over that open ditch. Bobsworth is alongside stablemate Triolo Delane as they go now on towards the next, which will be fence number 16. On his own on the inside, booted into it. Uh, T for three, jumped out away to his right over that fence. Silviniano Conti is there between them. Cloudy two, followed out wide now by Ublon de Zobo. Lyrene Legend towards the inside, followed by Bobsworth, who's now being to make good headway. Last installment has lost his place as they got over the ditch, and last installment has gone. He's 
unseated his rider just when he was backpedaling at the time. So now they make the run towards the top of the hill and they go now on towards the fifth from home in the Gold Cup and it's on his own and T for three. Ublon de Zobo, Silviniano Conti between horses. Lyrene Legend is right there on the inside and Barry Geraghty all the while is creeping ever closer on Bobsworth as they make the run slightly downhill towards the fourth last. Silviniano Conti moves up now on the outside of on his own. Once again, booted into that fence. Lyrene Legend on the inside was over in third. Now Bobsworth is ridden along in fifth position. He's just in behind T for three. Cloudy two begins to beat a retreat as Triolo Delane tries to make ground on the inside of the giant bolster who's also now trying to rally to the cause. They race down towards the third from home and as they do so, Silviniano Conti more fluent there than on the inside on his own. And then Lyrene Legend and Bobsworth who's now been driven along back in fourth. T for three, Triolo Delane followed by the giant bolster and then Lord Windermere who's never been closer than he is now. They make the final turn in the Gold Cup. Silviano Conte has got the lead. Bobsworth on the outside. Lyrene Legend cutting to the inside. On his own is still there. The giant bolster is staying on. Triolo Delane as well as they're over the second last and it's Silviano Conte who has the lead. Drifts across in front of Bobsworth and now cuts to his inside. Still Lord Windermere continues to stay on as they come towards the 20 second and final fence. Silviniano Conti had the lead over Bolsworth in second. Lord Windermere, the giant bolster on the near side, on his own begins to rally. It's Lord Windermere who now takes the lead with on his own rallying to the near side, racing up towards the line. Lord Windermere ahead in front and Lord Windermere has won the Cheltenham Gold Cup. So taken uh, by I Wright and Castleborn West. The water jump coming up now. Final time, 13 of the 19 fences. And Alaho, little blunder at the previous fence, better there. Pim has now uh, dropped away and is about to be pulled up. Number nine, Pim losing touch. Alaho leads. Minel Indo Copperhead battle over Doyne are very close. Third of the open ditches coming up here. Champ and easy game behind those. I right is next. Castleborn West, Mark Walsh was one side even just after the fence, but maintains the partnership and is still in contention, but at the last place. Another plain fence coming up, uh, which it is still Alaho. He's travelled really strongly in front. Leeds, Minella Indo also gone really strongly throughout in second. And then Copperhead and I right, an easy game, and back over Doyne and Champ on the left. Now they're all starting to make their moves. Slade House behind those. Castleborn West is next. This is the final one of the open ditches. I right and error. Minella Indo took off a long way from it in second place. Alaho continues to have the advantage. So it's three plain fences in the RSA novices chase from here. Nine remain. They're only covered by six lengths. You've all got a shout as they begin the downhill run. And Alaho leads. Minella Indo in second position. Back over Doyne and Champ are off towards the left. I right is towards the right. Copperhead behind those. Easy game is coming there. Slate House and on the extreme left, Castleborn West in the blue and white is also motoring into it. So now there's only four lengths between the nine that remain. This is the third last. Alaho just in front. Minella Indo in second place. Back over Doyne coming into it in the maroon and white colours. Champ, one from the left is there. Copperhead behind those. Castleborn West on the extreme left. They're heading towards the home turn. They have two plain fences to jump. Alaho and Minella Indo have always been one and two. Champ is two lengths behind him in third. Back over Doyen behind those. Then Castleborn West. And now they move into the straight. Alaho on the right. Minella Indo, the maroon and yellow. And Minella Indo and Rachel Blackmore put in the better leap there. Castleborn West has unseated rider at the second second last, Minella Indo at the last, oh, clambered over it, Alaho is back level with him, off up the run and they go, they're clear from Champ, blue cap is Alaho, the maroon jacket is Minella Indo, who is in front now, Champ is running on between them, look out for Champ, Minella Indo, Alaho together, Champ storming through, Barry Geraghty on Champ, has lifted the prize late on, Minella Indo in second, Alaho in third, back over Doyen, I right behind them. They'll be inside there dropping Nipper Reed and seek the faith as they now take the water jump and Edredon Blur lands over fluently by about a half length from Nordance Prince as we look down 
from high. Uh, uh, flagship of Morales in third, Celebrate in fourth as they take this open ditch. The outback way right on the inside. There's no margin for error at this pace as they run now towards the next. It's fence number eight coming up of the 12, and it's still Edredon Blur kicked into it by the champion jockey, and he's just beginning to open up a little bit now. Has three lengths on Nordan Sprints. Flagship of Morales, the favourite, right there on the inside. Then direct route from the outback way. Space Trucker going well in behind them, and then Celebrate, a big open ditch. This is four out there coming to Edredon Blur. Great job. Oh, Nordon sprints a crashing tumble. Space Trucker was badly interfered with and has lost a lot of ground as they make the top turn. Edredon Blur by about two and a half lengths. Flagship Uberalis and Joe Tizard moving well in second place. Then direct route in third as they start down the hill in the Queen Mother champion chase with three fences left to jump. Edredon Blur has led all the way so far, but both Flagship Uberalis Morales on the outside and direct route on the inside are waiting to pounce. Here's three out. Edredon Blur over first by two lengths still. Flagship Uberalis is now pushed along in second. Direct route on the inside under Norman Williamson looking for a double. The outback way is running on. Here's the second last. Edredon Blur moving out. Flagship Uberalis was down on his nose there in second place but still in with a shout. Direct route now delivering a run back in third as they make the final turn with one fence to jump and then the hill. Edredon Blur will not surrender the lead lightly. Here coming at him, his direct route in the orange jacket. The favourite on the far side, flagship of Morales. The final fence, three in a line. Edredon Blur just in front from direct route. Flagship of Morales on the far side. Edredon Blur challenged all the way up the hill by direct route. Direct route putting his nose in front. Edredon Blur fights back on the near side. The bombing finish. Very tight direct route, far side. On the near side, Edredon Blur. Space Fab lands just in the lead over that ditch from Ribbon's man, Travado on the far side, Viking flagship just in behind him. Then Deep Sensation, Catapatic Wonder Man, and Sibylian over the eighth there. Slight mistake there by Catapatic. And now to the final ditch. Four from home and Space Fair still leading them. Space Fair lands in the lead from Remittance Man. Viking flagship between horses. Catabatic on the inside. Sibylian still the back marker. Travado won from last. Space Fair still as they run downhill towards the third last in the Queen Mother champion chase. Space Fair, the leader from Viking flagship, traveling well just towards his outside. Right over on the outside is Travado with Remittance Man upsides him. And Remittance Man a faller there. The Remittance Man has gone at that one. He's left Travado in the lead. Travado from Viking flagship over on the far right between horses is Deep Sensation traveling well. As they come down to the second last, Travado lands in the lead from Viking flagship and Deep Sensation. Then behind them come Wonder Man. They're racing round the home turn now, and as they do so, Deep Sensation traveling very smoothly in the center over on the far side, Viking flagship on the near side, it's Travado. Travado on the near side, on the far side, Viking flagship between horses, Deep Sensation, a previous winner, over the last, and Travado on the near side, and Deep Sensation, and Viking flagship on the far side, it's Travado on the near side, Deep Sensation in the center, Viking flagship over on the far side, it's anybody's race as they race to the line, Viking flagship over on the far side, has taken a fractional advantage, Viking flagship has just won it from Travado. Bob is under pressure. Nenefar Kalange on the outside. Richard Alain Man still being patiently ridden in about 10th or 11th place now for AP McCoy as they take that last fence on the far side. And Wichita missed out that fence. He blundered his way over that just when trying to make up some ground. It's Comply or Die who finds his way, way on the outside then to dispute the advantage with Ollie McGurn now and on the inside the Sawyer. In fourth is Wind Instrument. Then Todd a Whiskey. Behind these then is Dear VA's White Cap traveling well. Nenefar Kalange, a good leap by Nenefar on the outside. So too Maljimar. Then but Colleen Orlean made a mistake there. Under pressure is Lactudal as they make their way across the top of the hill. 
and making their way down now towards the last three fences here in the William Hill Trophy handicap chase and the Sawyer's not really been headed on the inside uh, he goes by about a neck up at this stage on Ollie McGurn comply or die struggling now back in third to maintain his position wind instrument Todd Whiskey Nenefar Collange behind these then is Dia VA Maljamar's orange jacket making up good ground then comes Edipe on the outside with Lac Dudel which of the line man is not making much of an impression again a shoddy jump by the favorite down the hill they come they're coming towards the second last the Sawyer determinedly for William Kennedy still has the lead Ollie McGurn in second Nenefar Collange Maljamar the one that travels for Daryl Jacob in the orange colors as they go over two out Maljamar draws alongside the Sawyer from Ollie McGurn a fall of Patsy Hall then which of the line man's trying hard now under AP goes into fifth place down the hill they come towards the home straight a climb up now to the last it's Maljamar the Sawyer Nenefar Collange and which of the line man he stays forever he engages overdrive now here he comes on the outside it's Maljamar Nenefar Collange and which of the line man is the final fence Maljamar in front Nenefar Collange which of the line man and then DVA back in fourth place up the hill Maljamar Daryl Jacob by two lates here from Nenefar Collange which of the line man Maljamar needs the line 50 yards left to go here comes which of the line man with a charge he gets there which of the line man for AP McCoy John Joe and JP McManus win the William Hill Trophy Bino trying to wind it up, trying to blunt the speed from the others as they climb towards the third last flight of hurdles. Sally's girl in second, Lady Rebecca and Le Coudre are both close enough to lay down significant challenges. Paddy's return and Joyush follow these with Turnpole making stealthy headway. Up the next then, Dino's Bino, a narrow leader at that, as we once again look down on them and the vigorous McCoy shaking up, but Sally's girl goes up on his outside and Dino's Bino is now right under pressure from Lady Rebecca looking good in third. Le Coudre is tucked away in fourth place then. From Paddy's return, Joyush Turnpole, Anzum driven for dear life. And Sally's girl has got the better of Dino's Bino. But can she get the better of Lady Rebecca, Le Coudre and Paddy's return who are snapping at their heels? As they begin with this end, Joyush isn't that far away, nor Turnpole. So plenty of chances in the bonus Prince Deus hurdle as they level up towards the second last to the striped jacket Sally's girl. Gold cap is Lady Rebecca, these go one and two. White cap is Le Coudre, orange cap is Paddy's return. And then Dino Fino, the inside, has done his running. Joyous is on the outside with a bit of a shad, but it's Sally's girl. And uh, Lady Rebecca, the local hero, but Le Coudre is moving menacingly as they make the final turn. Well, can Norman go on on Lady Rebecca? But Charlie Swallow Le Coudre has every move covered as they come down the home run and towards the final flight of the boat as Prince Deus Hurdle, and it's a head-to-head. -head. Le Coudre, who cost 20 times as much, if not more than Lady Rebecca, but they don't know that. In behind them, Anzum starts to pick up for a place. Down towards the final flight, it's head-to-head, -head. and it's Lady Rebecca and Le Coudre, the giant a horse from France, as they race up the hill in the Steyr's Hurdle Championship. It's Le Coudre going on. still as one with does he know a very close third and then fantasticus and one more flurry in the green and white to the nose banded t clipper our power run to milan foxy jacks deepest of all in the white silks bad mistake from grumpy charlie there the gray was down in his nose vintage clouds has completely lost his place he's out the back now with his cordially and korak rambler uh, fleur is still yet to be put in the race in the black and pink he's upsized death duty in the maroon and white and they're alongside rapper as they take the ditch four out jericho rock was in front there from Kiltili Briggs. Then the nose banded pair of T Clipper and Does He Know and Our Power in the cheek pieces. Foxy Jacks in a white jacket is next as they start the descent, uh, being followed by Fantastic as one more flurry. Oscar Elite run to Milan, lost in translation, a yellow jacket. And then Belagas and Ben Dundee in the stripes. Fleur is still a long way back. He's in behind Noble Yates, the orange sleeves, who receives a reminder or two. Death Duty is shaken up to try and close. Uh, further back to Korak, Rambler, and Rapper, and full back. And then 
Chris Cordently and Vintage Clouds, Dr. Duffy last of those still going. Grumpy Charlie pulled up and over the third last it was Jericho Rock in front. Oscar Elite on the outer with a big white face is moving into it with our power. Fantastic as the black and white and T clipper in the noseband and they round out the leading five as they swing for home. A break of a couple lengths to Death Duty Maroon Jacket staying on. Frost is working away on Frodon trying to get him competitive and then lost in translation as they swing to face the final two fences. Korak Rambler from a long way back. Purple and yellow stays on. Jericho Rock in front of the second last joined on the near side by Oscar Elite. These two move on together as they approach the final fence and the Ultima. Jericho Rock and Oscar Elite as one. Korak Rambler in third is still staying on. He's bearing down on them. Has to switch. Jericho Rock, Oscar Elite, Korak Rambler threads the eye of the needle, surges for the front close home and stays on strongly. And it's Korak Rambler for Scotland who wins the Ultima. Delta work is following him through. Potter's corner, Easy's land is shaken up. Plan of attack has been inching ever closer under a patient ride. The green cap for Dara O'Keefe as Tiger Roll leads them out over the next to Delta work. And they head on now towards fence 27. It's the entry style canal turn uh, for the final time. So the 27th of the 32 fences in the Glen Farkless chase approaching. Tiger Roll to owner mate Delta Work. Michuka in the stripes wide. Potter's Corner close up in fourth. Plan of attack right in behind them and then the grey diesel Dallier. There's a small break then to the remainder are being headed by Alpha Desobo and the field is thin right out and it's Tiger Roll in front as they head towards fence 28. He jumps well there. Delta Work though is his shadow and at this stage is looking menacing. Tiger Roll and Delta work over that one. About three lengths ahead of Diesel Dallier and Plan of Attack and then Machuca and Potter's Corner and again Tiger Roll and Delta work are very slick and one or two of the others are now beginning to cry enough. Potter's Corner's under pressure, Machuca is under pressure. Plan of Attack has every chance in third as they re-emerge onto the race course proper with two to jump in the Glen Farkless chase. Tiger Roll being stalked by Delta work. Tiger Roll lands two lengths clear. Delta Work is following him through. Then plan of attack and Diesel Dallier and it's Tiger Roll. Is this his date with destiny? He swings for home. Delta Work on the right still has every chance and Tiger Roll might have to fight for his prize. He heads on down towards the last. Two lengths ahead of Delta Work who's bearing down on him. The jigging step to pair have it between themselves. Here's the last Tiger Roll narrowly. Delta Work is throwing down a very stern challenge on the far side Tiger Roll is digging in bravely. He knows where the winning post is, but Delta Work is going to spoil his party. And Delta Work comes home strongest. Tiger Roll is carried out on his shield. And he's now been vigorously ridden towards the outside by Noel Feely. Hasn't really picked up the bit since that shuddering error at the third. They go over the first of two open ditches in the Arkel and they're all safely over. Champagne Fever by two lengths. Trifolium is racing in second. Western Warhorse on the inside in third. Valdez now pokes his white blaze up on the outside to get much closer. Dodging bullets again. Another mistake by Rock on Ruby and his jumping really has let him down today under this pressure cooker as they now make the run uh, slightly along the dog leg turn on towards the final open ditch. Fence number 10, the fourth from home in the Arkle, and it will be Champagne Fever, who jumps it really well. Over in second, Trifolium. And then on the outside, Valdez is in third, and Dodging Bullets is in fourth. Western Warhorse now is already beginning to hoist the white flag, and then around the outside is Grand Away, followed then by Ted Veal, as now they're beginning to make the run down the hill. On now towards the third from home, and now Ruby Walsh begins to wind it up here on Champagne Fever, and Trifolium Folium and Brian Cooper tries to track them every step of the way. Valdez is out wide. Followed then towards the inside by Dodging Bullets. Western Warhorse to his credit is boxing on. Followed by Grand Away on the outside. A bad mistake by Ted Veal. And now a long run towards the first in the straight, which will be the second from home. Champagne Fever still clings the rail and clings to a tenuous lead to the outside. It's Trifolium, but it's Champagne Fever who begins to kick off the turn. He's gone a length clear once again. 
Trifolium now he's been driven, dodging bullets, tries to get through on the inside rail, followed by Valdez and then Western Warhorse. Here's the second from home, Champagne Fever is repelling all raiders. Trifolium on the outside, Ted Veal was a faller when beaten at the second last. Here's the final fence now, Champagne Fever in second place, Trifolium and Western Warhorse. A remarkable run, having hit a flat spot at the top of the hill. He is rallying manfully towards the near side. Champagne Fever, though, digs, racing to line. Champagne Fever and Western Warhorse. Western Warhorse may have nicked it right on the line. And if he has, it is a quite remarkable performance to win it at double digits. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.